Hey, how's it going guys? My name's Tim. I'm a wedding filmmaker and photographer based in Canberra. I'm part of Season Ascent Films. Um, today's video, I'll just be sharing my thoughts on the Canon R5 from a wedding filmmaker's perspective. So I've had the Canon R5 for about six months now. Um, and in that time, I've had a chance to test it out um, in the field on various adventures and hikes. And I've also been able to shoot two entire weddings on it as well. Just one note, the moment I got it, I installed firmware 1.1, which helped um, a lot of the overheating problems. So all of my thoughts will be based with that in mind. Without further ado, let's get into it. The first adventure I took it on was on a small hike up Gibraltar Peak with my wife and my younger brother. For this adventure, the camera was bare bones and I shot handheld the entire time. I shot internally to a CF Express card and recorded most of the shots in 4K 50p, both full frame and the cropped down sampled mode. I also tested some 4K 100 frames a second as well as 4K 25p HQ. No adventure is complete without coffee. We made sure to bring a flask up with us. The coffee and the views was quite a nice reward after a very steep hike. While up there, we met some rock climbers and it was pretty impressive watching them do their thing. I shot pretty intermittently, similar to how I would on your average wedding location shoot, and never had an overheating warning. The lowest the heat time got was five minutes remaining, but it never went lower than that. The ambient temperature was, was moderate at about 14 degrees Celsius. So I've got a 2019 spec'd out iMac with um, 60 gig of RAM and the Core i9 processor behind me here. And after we got back from that adventure, I was curious to see how the H.265 files would actually edit. Um, the computer maybe played it back in Premiere Pro 50% of the time smoothly. The other time was quite laggy. As far as quality goes, I was very impressed with the quality out of this camera, both in the HQ modes and the non-HQ modes. As far as color grading goes, I was very impressed with how easy this footage was to color correct and color grade. I didn't have to do a whole lot apart from adjusting exposure slightly and doing my own personal preference with a LUT. There was a fair bit of latitude to work with and I didn't feel like um, the camera was holding me back in terms of colors. For me personally, the sluggish codec, um, while it can be hard to work with, it's not a deal breaker for me, but it's just something to be aware of. As a wedding filmmaker, um, I've relied on gimbals a fair bit in the past and when I bought the R5, um, I took the opportunity to switch up my filming style a little bit and I'm giving handheld work more of a go. So I built this monstrosity of a camera rig, um, dialed it in a little bit, and this is what I've been using for the last two weddings that I've shot. At the core of this, there is a, a small rig half cage, quick release cage. Um, this allows me to take the camera in and out really quickly if I wanted to use a gimbal or take some photos. I also went with the, the half cage because the grip on the R5 is really comfortable and it'd be such a shame to cover that up. So I've got, I used the grip on the right side and I've installed another handle on the left side of the, of the camera as well. Now, as for the rest of this camera rig, the lens, I only have EF lenses, so I have to adapt them, which puts them out even further. And the lenses I do have are quite chunky. I've got a, a Canon EF 85mm 1.4. I've got this 50mm and I'm currently using a Sigma 24 to 35 F2. These are all quite heavy lenses. So for handheld work, I've also installed rails and put counterweights at the back of this. This may seem a little excessive to some um, or a bit pointless to put rails, but for me, having that extra weight helps for really stable footage along with the inbuilt um, image stabilization. And I personally don't mind the extra weight. Um, it makes great steady shots and I get a bit of a workout throughout the day. I've built it in such a way that the screen, similar to like a, like a classic red setup is right here. 
Um, I can move it up and down quite comfortably. And this top handle is great. So it's perfectly balanced as you can see. Um, and I can hold it like this. And these weights also act as a nice third point of contact if I'm holding at eye level like this. So all in all, I get some very stable footage. As I said, the quick release plate um, allows me to take the camera out really easily for gimbal or photography. And I'll just show you really quickly. All I have to do is undo that, undo this, and then she comes straight out like that. To complement the R5, I bought the Atomos Ninja 5. Um, and I also bought a one terabyte SSD to go into that. Um, this allows me to unlock unlimited recording as well as a, a whole bunch of useful tools that the, the monitor offers, such as focus peaking, false colors, um, aspect ratio overlays, and custom LUTs. Um, it also allows me to shoot in ProRes 422, which, will, which helps me a ton in the editing room. These files play back seamlessly on my computer and it makes editing a breeze. The one drawback of ProRes 422 is the files are quite large. So if you're not careful, even the one terabyte can get filled up quite quickly. If any of you are curious about the, the camera rig parts that I'm using from SmallRig, just let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to let you know exactly what I'm using. So after I build out this camera rig, I really want to test the practical functionality of this, um, as well as test the workflow with the new ProRes files. So this just naturally called for another adventure. This little micro adventure was late spring in 2020. It had recently snowed about 40 minutes away from home at Corrin Forest, and we decided to check it out. This was one of many areas that had been devastated by bushfires at the beginning of 2020, so it was nice seeing regrowth and the contrast that snow provided. My wife and I love the snow and jump at any opportunity to go and see it. We walked around the forest in the snow for about two hours, taking our time and having fun shooting on the R5. The rig felt great to hold and I was thoroughly impressed with the Atomos as a monitor. As for how I set up the R5, I had overheating control turned off and I was only recording externally to the Ninja. I had the screen on the R5 set to turn off after one minute, which I'm told helps with overheating. The autofocus was that good that I rarely had to wake the screen to adjust it. I shot mainly in 4K50, both in full frame and in the crop mode. I also shot some 4K HQ clips. After shooting bursts of clips consistently, the overheating countdown never dipped below 25 minutes. However, it's worth noting that the ambient temperature at this point was about three degrees Celsius. When we got back home and I put the files onto the computer, um, I was quite blown away with how easy and seamlessly they were to edit. Um, there's no comparison between ProRes 422 and the H.265 files. The colors were on point and again, these files were very easy to color grade. There was next to no color correction needed, just a bit of exposure and my own personal color grading preferences. Since then, using this setup, I've actually shot two entire weddings using it now. My wife's second shoots on a Canon EOS R, which I'm using to film now, and I've shot entirely using this. Going handheld creates more natural down to earth camera movements and I believe this kind of helps the viewer step inside your scene a little bit more rather than being like a static. Um, observer. Overall, I enjoy the versatility that this rig set up for me and I'm pretty keen to keep using this in the foreseeable future. So for both weddings, I shot a mix of 4K50, both cropped and full frame. I also use 4K HQ. I didn't end up using 4K100, um, interestingly. As far as settings go, I had the exact same settings as before where overheat control was turned off. I had only recording externally in the screen set to shut off after one minute. Um, and for both weddings, I never once had an overheating warning at all. And I was shooting quite consistently. And at points I was shooting um, long, form, long form stuff as well. For the long form, I used 4K HQ once or twice, but for the most part I used um, 
the non-HQ 4K25. Prior to testing this, I definitely had concerns about the, the overheating because that was such a big thing, especially when this camera first came out. But after using it in the field and using it for two weddings and not having any issues, I'm very comfortable and very confident in this setup. It's worth mentioning that the first wedding I shot this on was humid and quite warm at 29 degrees Celsius. Second wedding, I think it peaked at around 25 degrees Celsius. The downsampled 4K HQ out of this camera is probably like the best 4K I've seen out of any non-cine camera ever. If you're not needing to slow your footage down, this is definitely the, um, the format to use. However, from where I'm sitting, the non-HQ 4K out of this camera is also quite nice. It's a lot better than the Canon EOS R. And I can guarantee you, the average person who doesn't know a lot about cameras won't be able to tell the difference between HQ and non-HQ. The only people who will complain about the non-HQ and say that it's um, unusable will typically be your pixel pieces. Often these people are the kind of people that put gear above story. All the footage that you've seen this far has been a mix of 4K HQ, non-HQ, 50p and 4K 120. And apart from the fact that some of the clips have been slowed down, um, especially on this YouTube format, I don't think you're gonna be able to tell the difference between any of them. Now, while this video is mostly about the camera's video capabilities, it is worth mentioning that it is, it is an excellent photography camera. Photography is part of the reason why I got this over say a dedicated cinema camera such as a C200 or even the new C70. On top of wedding filmmaking, I also do a fair bit of um, photography. And you know, whether that's from paid gigs for clients through to landscape photography on my travels. Having the R5 allows me to shoot video and then quickly swap over and take photos if I need to. Um, it's also great having a dedicated photography camera for when I'm doing just a photography shoot. And when I need multiple bodies, I just pair this with my EOS R. Without getting too hung up on the details, the photography from this camera is excellent. And the specs that this offers is arguably on par with the Canon 1DX Mark III, crossed with something like a Sony a7R IV. All in all, who would I recommend this camera for? I definitely recommend it for hybrid shooters such as myself who shoot both film and photo, especially if you have the means to pair it with something like the Ninja 5 and unlock some more cinema capabilities. I would also recommend this camera for people who are just into photography, even if you don't use the video functions. It's arguably one of the best photography cameras out there and if you've got the budget, I say go for it. Lastly, if you only shoot video and you don't do photography, I would not recommend this for you. I would recommend definitely getting a dedicated cinema camera, especially if you're looking at the price range of what this is in. You're better off getting something that's dedicated, that already has inbuilt features and you don't have to rig it out um, and go through that hassle to unlock some of those features and bypass some of the issues this has with video. So that's it from me guys. If you enjoyed this, I would very much appreciate a comment or a like. Um, if you've got any questions about the rig, feel free to drop them below and I'll see you in the next video. See you guys.